I'm a physiotherapist and the founder of NeuroFitBC here in Vancouver. And I'm Sarah King. I'm also a physical therapist and founder of Invigorate Physical Therapy and Wellness in Austin, Texas. So we are here in Vancouver for the Movement Disorder Society Congress. And if you saw our summary videos, you would have heard us talk a little bit about dyskinesia and some motor complications in Parkinson's. So what we're going to do today is show you a few exercises that you can do to work on your proprioception and vestibular training. So here we go. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to start with is a little bit of weight shifting, working on feeling our feet on the ground, and we're going to use targets to make sure that we're getting to our full movement amplitude as well. So what Sarah's going to do is she's going to be between two targets. We're using um, the wall and a piece of equipment we've got here in the gym, but you can use anything from X's on the floor, two walls, anything you have to use as a target is just fine. So what she's going to do is she's going to bend her knees a little bit. She's going to make sure that her weight is evenly distributed between your feet. So you really want to concentrate on how your feet feel on the floor. She's going to shift her weight all the way over to one side and she's going to reach the opposite foot out to touch the target. So in this case, reaching the foot out to touch the wall, coming back to center, recentering herself over those feet and then shifting your weight and touching the other target. So your feet are your primary connection and when you're in standing, your only connection to the floor. So it's really important that you're aware of where your feet are, are on the floor and, and whether or not you're centered and balanced over your feet. If you get used to being centered and balanced over your feet, it can help improve things like standing balance, reducing falls, reducing freezing of gait, and even improving things like posture. So doing these exercises, you can do somewhere between 10 and 15 repetitions and you can do them every day. They're nice and simple. So this is the first exercise we're going to show you for today. So exercise number two is going to be from the kneeling position. So we have a little padded mat here, but if you're at home and you've got sensitive knees, just slide a pillow underneath your knees. But Naomi's feet are up against the wall here. She's on her knees. And um, what she's going to do, she's going to take one hand, rotate and reach behind her up and back until her fingertips touch the wall. And she's extending all the way through her elbows, through her fingers, through making everything nice and big, turning her shoulders and her hips. So we're getting so many joints involved here, which is really important for proprioception. So the more input, which more pressure on each joint um, you can get, the, the more impact you're going to have with that exercise. So she's reaching back towards the wall. She's going to bring it back to center and rotate and reach with the opposite arm back towards the wall. So she's keeping her hips pressed forward and really extending all the way through your trunk. So don't let your hips fall back and towards your heels. You want to really stay tall, up and reach and rotate. So we're really emphasizing that trunk rotation, that lift and reach, doing about 10 to 15 on each side and starting slow and emphasizing that range of motion and then building into higher repetitions or a faster movement. There you go. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to do is for your vestibular system. So that's your inner ear system that helps you with your balance. This exercise we're going to work on separating our eye movement from our head movement. So there's a few options as to how you can stand. Sarah's starting with her feet shoulder width apart, which is a great place to stand. If that gets easy, she can go into tandem stance with one foot in front of the other. So that's an option. If it's easy, you can go into this stance to make it harder. So the first thing that Sarah's going to do is she's going to keep her head perfectly still and she's going to use her eyes to track back and forth. So she's going to maintain her balance. She's going to turn her eyes all the way one way without moving her head at all. And then she's going to bring them back to center and turn the other way. At home, if you're doing this, you can stand in front of a wall and a really good way to do it is to put X's on the wall as a visual target so that you can go from one X to the center to the other X. So she's turning her eyes without moving her head. The next thing she's going to do is she's going to turn her eyes all the way to one side and then she's going to bring her head along after. She's going to rotate her head to one side, bring her eyes back to center first, then bring her head and then the same thing to the other direction. So turn her eyes, then turn her head, eyes first and then head. So this is a really good way to practice training for your vestibular system. If you get dizzy, you can continue but make sure you're safe. So if you get dizzy and you feel like you're going to fall down, stop. If you get a little bit dizzy, but you're in a nice safe place where you can maintain your balance, that's okay. We want to accommodate the system and teach the system that this is normal. So again, if that's easy, you can put one foot in front of the other into a tandem stance and you can repeat those same exercises. So she's going to get in a tandem stance where it's a little bit harder to balance. She's going to start with just the eye movements and then eventually she's going to add back in the head. 
So again, if you get dizzy, that's okay. A little bit of dizziness during this exercise is okay. If you get really dizzy, you need to stop. That's just fine. You want to practice each for about 30 seconds to a minute, two or three times a day. So that's exercise number three. So Naomi's in this all fours position and she's going to start moving her hands in different directions. So she's got her left hand moving forward and then she's gonna bring it all the way back behind her other hand and she's just gonna alternate going forward, stepping forward with her hand and then back. So her right hand is staying in place, her left hand's moving. She's gonna do about five with the left arm and then switch and do about five with the right. So as you're going through these, if you have um, some tight wrists, you have tight elbows, maybe you're, um, it's kind of a lot of pressure in your hands, maybe just do a few on each side um, to get used to it. And as you get stronger, you can build up. But really think about keeping your hands big, your elbows straight, and the more, the distance that you move, if you go farther, it's gonna be more challenging. Um, if you wanna start with kind of small baby steps like Ziggy's got, um, then you can just do small steps. You can also go side to side, so you can alternate taking a nice wide step out with your hands, so your hands are moving side to side, or you can even twist and rotate, <laughs> reaching kind of up in a diagonal towards Ziggy, <laughs> and then back the other direction. There you go. So um, listen to your body here. Again, if your knees are sensitive, put a pillow underneath your knees. Maybe you need to start with just one or two reps, or maybe you just need to start holding that tabletop position and not moving your hands, and that's fine too. So everyone, thanks for joining us today for those four proprioceptive and vestibular exercises. We'll be back tomorrow with some more videos from the MDS Congress and what we've learned each day. So if you want to see those videos again, you can check out Sarah's Invigorate page and you can come to Neuro50C and check them out there. And we will see you tomorrow for some more information. Bye. Bye.